chaos. You know that everything is happening nowadays. So we need Jesus to be a fence and a protector of us every day along life's way. You know, Rudy he always blessed me, but you know, it's always amazing too that when he comes sometime that I end up blessing him through the word of God. You know, it's always a privilege but to, and honor to stand in and stand before you. But you know, it's been a dry season that some of you maybe haven't heard my voice in a long time up here. But you know, I tell you, God is good. He Because in the midst of things, God is preparing things. See, this sermon was birthed in a time of trial in my life. So you know, the thing is that God says to comfort, as God comforts you that you comfort others. And he said in another place that know that your brothers or sisters are going through the same thing. So you know, in that word that comes about like that, you know, I like to be obedient to that very factor. You know, not so much as that, because see, I love the Lord and I love my brothers and sisters in Christ. You know, my life is transparent. You know, there's nothing hidden in my life. I go through things. I've been through a fiery trial here in the last two months. But as you can see, here I stand. But it's all in accordance to God's word. It says, by his mercy, you are not consumed. Speaking of trials in your life. You know, before I get any further, let me, let's go to prayer first. Father, we just thank you for who you are, Lord. I thank you for an opportunity, Lord, to share. Because you know the trial that I have, and that I've been through, Lord, and Lord, that you have brought me through because you were there with me. Lord, I thank you that you placed in my heart that brother, your brothers and sisters are going through things and now you can share with them what you went through and that you can glorify me in it. And Lord, I just thank you for that opportunity. You know, I ask, Lord, first and foremost, that you watch over our pastor and the first lady as he's on a journey. He needed a time of rest. You know, and he needed to check on his father. So, Lord, I ask that you be with them. That you watch over them, that you protect them. And, God, that you would bring them back to us safely. Lord, I just ask, Lord, that... Every word that comes from my mouth be of you and not myself. Amen. Lord, I, I pray that you open up every heart today, Amen. every mind Amen. to understand, every heart to receive. Yes, Lord. And give us all the willingness, Lord, that as your word go forth to obey it and to walk in it. Yes. Lord, I just ask you to bless those that are going through some fiery trials right now. Yes. May this word be a comfort to them. Lord, and as they are in a trial, Lord, they can get out of it and go and be a blessing to someone else because that's what you call us to do. So, God, I just ask you to have your way. Have your way, Lord. May I decrease and you increase. That only you can do. May every word that come be true. Your word is true. Let it be, thus says the Lord, not of any opinion, but I'll share my life that as the Lord and boast in what you have done for me in my life, that it can be an encouragement for my brothers and sisters that are going through the same thing. So, Lord, have your way, Lord, and through all and everything, Lord, and for all eternity, we'll be careful to give you praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. You know, I won't go into details of Things. You know, as a matter of fact, you know, still, I'm still in a fiery trial. You know, and sometimes I, 
don't really know what's going on. But one thing I do know, I know who's in control. I know who's in control. You know, in times in my life, and as you know, you look in your bulletin and you see, it says, why is this happening? How many of us ask that question? But in, in telling this sermon, though, you know, I was caught for a while in, in, in the title of this sermon. You know, because there was one that says, who's with you in the storm? And there was another one that said, who or what are you looking at? But it was just settled in my spirit to make this title, Why Is This Happening? And I also put with it, trial under fire. You know, as most of us, we ask ourselves this question when things that don't seem to be going as we would have them, or someone is not acting in accordance with our view or our position. This question is asked by most Christians when suffering for their faith. I want to talk to you today about adversity because that, these are my function statements. Adversity and suffering. You know that word adversity, you know it means of an adverse situation. When we think things, everything is supposed to go good, but you know God has a way of working out his will and plan for our lives through adversity. And I want to just give you a definition of adversity. A few definitions. It says one of a state of hardship or affliction, misfortune, a, cal a cal calamitous event, and an affliction, a condition of pain, suffering, or distress. Calamitous as calamity, cla calamity, an extraordinary, serious event marked by a terrible loss, lasting distress, and affliction a state of dire distress or misfortune. How many of us have went through these, the descriptions of what we, how many of us are going through it right now? But I want to give you some comfort. Jesus in John 6, 33, you know, in John chapter 16, first he was talking to the disciples about him going to the cross. And then in verse 33, uh, six, in verse 33 of chapter 16, he said, I've said these things to you, that in me, your joy will be complete. But in this world, you will have tribulation. So I don't mean to, to set anybody off balance, but God didn't promise everything was going to be peaches and cream. And if you're looking for that because you're a Christian, then you're looking in the wrong way. Because the Bible tells me that the blessedness is sharing in the sufferings of Jesus Christ. So affliction, adversity, adverse. You are healthy and well now, right? But what if God, what if you get sick? What if you get sick? cancer or something of that sort. You know, I just want to, as I mentioned that, my sister Harriet, I watched her walk through a time of affliction yes. gracefully. Yes. Gracefully, she walked through a time of affliction. And when I would come and talk to her and all she would say is things is going to be all right. And there she stands right there. So affliction. You know, we think that God promises health and wealth and all these things, but God has a way of dealing with us. And in dealing with us, he deals with us through trial. You know, he told Israel, I have brought you 
into this wilderness to test you to, and to see if you will obey me. See, when adverse situations come and things that are, are the testing of the fact that are you going to continuously walk with God? Or are you going to turn around? Or are you going to complain and whine? Jesus said in John 6.33, he said, be of good cheer. I've overcome the world for you. How many of you can hold on to that promise in the time of affliction? There are three aspects of this, of trial, when Jesus said that. There are three, there are general trials that come simply because we live in a sinful world. How many can get affected by other people's sin? The world is affected today by other people's sin, about the economy and the people and the, the money. See, that's a, these are trials, general trials that come. And then there's the, the affliction, as I shared, that comes, and trials that, that God allows to come into our lives. And these afflictions and things are the ones that I say that sickness might hit you. So you ask that question, what I shared with you. Why is this happening? Why is this happening? Well, first thing is this, that if we thinking that we're going to continuously be healthy all the time because this body, the Bible tells us, as Paul said, though the outward man is wasting away, the inward man is being renewed day by day. It should be the inward man that's getting renewed every day. And then there's the chastisement that comes more directly from God. You can start to lose some things. See? So the thing is that my life has, in the past two months has, has been one of great concern. But it always, that it comes back to trust God. Trust God. As we go a little further into this sermon, you're going to, I pray that the Lord would enlighten you even more into the very factor of that you face your trial with a joy. Because they're not there to destroy you. They're there to build you. Now the world of unbelievers, it's a different story. Yeah. And through it all, that as we, you know, there's no need to stand because they are all of a Second Corinthians chapter five, verse seven. If we walk by faith, not by sight, that is the scripture today that we're going to build on in the midst of our trial. So you say, through this we have to live by faith in the Lord Jesus' words, I have overcome the world. See, the promises of God is what we're supposed to stand on. We're supposed to stand on the promises. Jesus says, in this world you would have to Tribulation, but be of good cheer. I will overcome the world. And as we overcome the afflictions, trials, and sufferings of this life, through our faith in the Lord Jesus, he gives us strength in the midst of them for the moment. Yes, it's moment by moment faith. How many of you can testify to that? Faith is a moment by moment. But we have a faith that we hold firm, that's eternal. Yeah. So that eternal faith, it keeps us while we walk through the moment by moment faith. Because we can lose some things and see that has, that's at a moment. 
See? But we have an eternal faith in that this is not our home right here. We have a glorious body waiting for us in heaven. Like I said, and sharing this is because of my experience. See, the Lord, when he healed a man, he told him, now go and tell him what the Lord has done. But where do you find your joy? In the midst of trial. Maybe your wife ain't acting right. Do you find your joy in her? Maybe your husband ain't acting right. Do you find your joy in that? Maybe you don't have a job. Is that what's going to bring you joy? Jesus said in John 16, 33, and it's plain for us all. He said that in me, in me, plain at that rule, in me, your joy will be complete. It's found in Jesus. That's who it's found in. But you know, through our experiences, some we like to we go through things and we mask things and we hold on to things. We do ourselves injustice when we are going through something and we don't want to share. Because when you, if you share what you're going through, guess what? Somebody might have, God might have placed somebody right there beside you that have been through it that can comfort you because they have been through it. And that's how we comfort one another as God comforts us. So, through my experience in trials and afflictions, hoping to bring a bit of comfort with the Lord's help to you all, is my wholehearted purpose to bring, because I know that I work for the Union Rescue Mission, and I see a many glaring broom faces and things and people suffering. But one thing about it that I try my best to, that, to bring a joy, because you don't see my face, to let my face have a gloom thing because of what I'm going through. But when I'm going through it, I'm looking for an opportunity Amen. to be a blessing to someone that's going through something because I see what's going on around here. I see families over there that's without a home. Mothers and concerned about their children. Guys and things don't have a home. I have guys come talking to me all the time. They call me a pastor. I mean, when they say that, that kind of make me get this small because I say I'm only a servant. Amen. But the thing is, pray for me because I need help. Pray for me because I want to get off of these drugs. Those that have known me and say because I see what God has did in your life, would you pray for me that he'll do the same? So if I'm all caught up in my trials with a frown and, and all over here don't want to be bothered, how can I be a blessing? As a matter of fact, can't nobody be a blessing to me because I'm so caught up in me. So it's with the Lord's help that I'll be a, a blessing to you and an encouragement to you in the midst of your trial, knowing that you're not alone. We're all in it together, but Jesus is right there with us. He said, I'll never leave you, nor forsake you. You know, it's amazing sometimes that in this world you see that people, they see in trial, you see the fires that's destroying homes. When I say losses, you see many things that take people losing their homes just by default. Other people. So conniving. So we don't put our hope in those things. You know, confirmation and confidence of the scriptures that we can find hope, the Bible says, that we can find hope. If you're not studying and looking into the word of God and you're hoping in this life only, the Bible says you're to be people most fitted because our hope is not found in this world. It's found in Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. It's found in Jesus.
You know, and such a wonderful thing that in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 18, it says that these things are just momentary light affliction. I, I want to read it to you. It says, For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that our far weighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary, but what is seen, unseen, is eternal. You hear that? Amen. Everybody say, a temporary setback. A temporary setback. That's all it is. Amen. See, it's amazing how when you're going through something that God can touch you and, and show you some things. See, the Word of God is the one that, that helps us. See? And God, he, he, His Word comes to you. He says, well, Gary, though, yeah, I, I'm, I'm aware of what you're going through. But I want you to know, Gary, that this is right here. It's just light and momentary. Because I've got something for you. Far, that far away is everything that you're going through in eternity. I have, a, have it for you. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but what is unseen. How can you do that? Many of you are probably asking, how can you do that, right? Unseen reality, y'all, is seen right here. Right here. That's why it says that we walk by faith, not by sight. It's got to be a faith walk, minute by minute, moment by moment, day by day. It's all about faith. The Bible says without faith it's impossible to please God. Those that, be, that, those that come to God must first believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. So if you're not involved in it, think about it for a minute. So we see that faith is not so much as looking at things that, we, that are visible, but things that are invisible, Amen. eternity. Amen. The, the scriptures testify in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 11, that God has placed eternity in our hearts. He's placed eternity in our hearts. You know, I, just the other day at the mission, I was ashamed to say that a lady dropped dead in the women's side of the the mission. You know, you don't know. You know, death is certain. And, and we shouldn't hope in these things and stuff that we hope in. You know, sometimes I get, get caught up and, and I see things, what I'm looking at, I hope for that, and some hit me and say, wait a minute. That's all right. Be content in what you have. Thank God. In the midst of the trial, thank God in the midst of it, because you stand on his word. Amen. We have to stand on the word of God in time, y'all, not anything that we can conjure up in our mind. Let the word of God saturate your mind and heart in your midst of your trial, and you'll find that you will walk through with your head up high. So through the eyes of faith, we should be looking out beyond our circumstances or present suffering. You know, then the Apostle Peter, you know, James, the Apostle James first says that consider it, count it all joy, or consider it joy when you face various trials and tribulations. The Apostle Peter, in 2 Peter chapter 1, I'm going to read that to you. See, it is confirmation. See, when you hear things twice from two witnesses, you know it's, it's sure and true. And in 1 Peter chapter 1, chapter 1, verses 6 to 7, it says this. In this you greatly rejoice, 
Though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. These have come, hear this now, these have come that your faith of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire may be proved, proved genuine and may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus is revealed. These have come. So if you go into something, if we are going to something, we know that the Bible, the Word of God has testified, these have come. They're not there to destroy you. God is trying to build you, and he's trying to bring you more like who? No, let's say it. To be, you bring you more like who? I beg your pardon, I can't hear you. No, he's coming to bring you more like Jesus, more like his son, and all of you should have shouted that for joy. To bring you more like Jesus. And these, these have come. And it says, your faith, which is work, it has a great work before God, your faith in God. That's why we said in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7, we said what? What did 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7 say? Well, we sure got some closed mouths in here. Uh, let, me, let, me, let me get somebody stirred up here. Uh, what's y'all mind and what are you looking at today? What are y'all looking at right now? You got your mind set on some other things that you can't be filled with joy at the word of God. Y'all need to focus. Because God is preparing us and he's through all these things to bring us forth. The Bible testifies, it says, to make us more like his son, Jesus Christ. Because Jesus suffered. You can examine it in Isaiah chapter 53. The suffering servant. He's acquainted with everything that you can ever go through. He knows all about it. Except for the girlfriend part. So if that's where your mind is set up, uh, that's a, don't be concerned, give it to God and you just focus upon the Lord. Because if, how, what good can you be to her if you're not, if you don't have Jesus? Amen. So the Apostle Peter encouraged us that we don't, we know that our faith and the trials that come, and he says of many, of various kinds of trials that come, these have come to test your faith, Amen. which is more precious than gold, though it's refined by fire. Remember I told you when I had, by bringing the title to this sermon, I was caught twisted between, but when I came to this one, why is this happening to me? Trial under fire. Amen. Fiery trial. If you think you've got it made, you're fooling yourself. Because if somebody had did me like I did myself, I'd have been in prison for life. Yeah. On how you treat yourself, you cause yourself more trials. We can cause ourselves more harm than anybody could ever cause us. Yeah. By the way we think. Yeah. Because we refuse to turn and to change our, renew our thinking and our mind by the word of God. Yeah. So the thing is that we, sometimes these things come too. Yeah. Because of our own doing. 
That's why it says the chastisement of God. That's why I gave you a general description of three different types of trials. One that God allows, and then the one God brings himself for the discipline. So the, the main thing is that it says that we suffer, that you're suffering, that you, everything is coming, is coming because for righteousness sake. Amen. Not because of unrighteous behavior and acts. Because it says that we're suffering for righteousness. The Spirit of God rests, when you suffer for righteousness, the Spirit of God rests upon you. But if you're suffering because of something that you're doing, the way that you're living, God is under his eyes, he's under pure eyes, and he can be a whole evil. And we all should be, our goal is to walk in a right way. Amen. And that's how we walk by faith, because it said walk by faith. And you ask yourself a question. How do I walk by faith? Moment by moment, with the decision to do the right thing Amen. and to obey God. Amen. Because if you got faith, if your faith is truly in God, then your faith is firm, is in his word and his standards that he's set for our lives. Because we know that the standards that God has set are good for us. Sometimes we allow our circumstances to, to, to depress us. But our loving Father has a solution and a cure. Chapter 3, verse 1. And it says this, and I can quote it so well. Set your mind on things above, not things on the earth. Amen. Set your mind in heaven where Christ is sitting, seated. Amen. But oh, we set our minds on the girl. We set our minds on the car. And we just get caught up in it. But this is not our home. The Bible gives us a cure right there. But we refuse to, to make application to it. Set your mind. It's like a, a ship's captain when he set his ship on a course. The comma. He set the course and the, and the ship followed the course. You know, faith, I mean, in, in, in Colossians chapter 3, it's a reminder, like, check this out, that faith is like looking out with an outstretched neck at eternal things. Yeah. So whatever you may be going through, if we would just look to Jesus as Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2, encourages. So my brothers and sisters, in this life, we are going to have trials and tribulations, as John 16, 33 tells us. So be of good cheer. Trials come knowing that Jesus, our Lord, watches over us, so we walk by faith, not by sight. You know, now comes a moment that is really dear to me. Uh, it, it, it's a moment that it's a decision got to be made. Yeah. yeah, we can come to church and we can get to feeling good and we can do this and we think this is our righteousness and we think that this is what saves us. But it My name is Anthony Stallworth and I'm a senior pastor at Central City Community Church of the Nazarene. We're located at 419 East 6th Street, downtown Los Angeles, on the corner of 6th and San Pedro. We are a church that serves the Skid Row community. So I'm sure that you can imagine that it's difficult for us to support our ministry with the tithes and the offerings. If today's message has helped you, perhaps you would like to come alongside Central City and prayerfully consider helping support this ministry by sending your tax-deductible gift to Central City Community Church, P.O. Box 13273, Los Angeles, California, 90013. Thank you.